All right, I'm back at it again. Uh, basically, I got a good deal on this welder. It's an older model, but from what I've read, they're fairly reliable. Um, the only major issue is uh, there's a, apparently there's a circuit board in here that could go bad, and you could have it rewired or um, replaced if that happens. So um, this is back when they used to make them big. Uh, anyway, I guess the, my predicament right now is that I got it put in the back of my truck with a forklift and um, I don't have any kind of lift or anything to get it out of there. I, it ha I have trouble just rolling it around. It's supposed to weigh somewhere around 800 pounds. So I'm not gonna try anything crazy to get it out of there, depending on your definition of crazy. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build this ramp um, basically out of two by fours and I got a piece of um, plywood uh, right here. And so I'm gonna make that the surface. And then I found these brackets at Home Depot. Right here, I'm gonna do a review on these too. They're called ramp parts ramp top kit and you can see from that picture how they're supposed to go in there i got the two little pieces in there it's a piece of hardware that um so the idea is that a two by four or two by twelve is what they have in their picture like just jams in here and then it comes with some uh some bolt hardware uh, that goes through the 2x4 in its entirety and then um, this thing here sits on the edge of the bed of the truck and it feels like it's going to be pretty stable these are fairly rugged and thick um, aluminum I want to say they're probably castings or some kind of extrusion but uh, they feel fairly sturdy. And then what I'm gonna do is I'll, so I'll have the top here, that'll be that two, uh, piece of plywood. And then I'm gonna drill a hole in it right here, and right here, and use like ratcheting straps like those and wrap them around the tailgate and ratchet them in so that it snugs everything up to this thing here so it doesn't fall off or go backwards. And I'm not gonna stand on this one. I'm, Lowering this down, I'm basically going to lower it with a come along. It's right here, and I got two connection points on the bed of my truck one right there, and another one back up in there somewhere. And so, I'm, I'm gonna use that come along just to lower it down the ramp slowly. Um, there's a big lug up at the top that's made for hoisting, and then these uh, wheels down on the bottom, it's sitting on this little go kart that's it's bolted to, and so I'm just gonna leave it on that and let it freewheel down that ramp i'm hoping i think it's going to be somewhere around 20 degrees yeah so with the come along it should be fine i think uh i think i'll be able to get it down without anything crazy happening but we'll find out stay tuned okay uh, so the first thing i'm going to do i need to figure out what this angle is um, that piece of plywood is 96 inches long or eight feet um, so that's going to be the long side here and I, so I got to figure out what angle it connects to the ground so I can cut the heel off of that uh, these two by four so that they sit flush with the ground not up on edge like that plus I don't want any kind of step at the end I just want them to basically uh, flush up with the ground it's not going to be perfect because depending on how much crap you got in the back of your truck it'll be like an inch or two higher um, or lower so I measured this guy right here with the welder in it and it's somewhere about 32 inches off the ground. Now I'm sitting on a hill kind of, you can see a little bit of an incline and then the truck is loaded down. So I'm guessing it's anywhere between 32 and 35 inches with, uh, depending on how much load you got in it. I'm gonna assume somewhere in between there and round the angle off. So I got a trig calculator and put it in it's somewhere around 20 degrees. I think with the 32 inches I'm talking about here, it came out to be right around 19, 
I'm gonna go ahead and make it 20 that way if I don't have so much crap it'll still tend to sit down uh, properly back here so I'm gonna go cut these off at 20 degrees and um, I'll be back all right, this is what I wound up with. Um, I was able to get that welder out of here. Um, basically rolled this, rolled it down this ramp. Um, I'm just gonna kind of talk through what I did. You can see those. So, <clears throat> I broke this into two pieces. You can see a split line right here. Um, basically these sections are 24 by in 24 wide and then it's a full length of plywood long and uh, I considered putting it all in one piece but after I got done uh, putting all the uh, rib structure in to kind of stabilize it it was um, it would would have been really heavy so I'm gonna turn this over and I'll show you what it looks like on the back okay it's pretty straightforward what's going on here um, so you got these long boards here that kind of act as stretchers goes all the way to the end down there and I put like I said I put these 20 degree ramps in and they look like they made up pretty well with the ground um, when the when it's installed in the truck you see I mean there's a little bit of gap but on one side um, they're not perfect they these lumber is fairly twisted as well um, I use deck screws to screw all this together. Uh, main reason is that I intend to use this again. Uh, so I just, like maybe, I don't know, once every 16 inches, I put a deck screw in here. And then I put five of these um, ribs. Basically, I walked up this and it was, it bowed a little bit in the middle. I was just thinking it would be more steady if you uh, put those ribs in, so. I did. They're just fixed to this here and not the board itself. But if you wanted to make it a little bit more solid, you could put fasteners through the um, plywood into the to the ribs. All right, now on this, this is a little gamey because what they wanted to do was take a two by twelve and lay it on the side, and um, I was basically trying to repurpose or utilize this bracket in a different way than the manufacturer was saying so what I did was I cut a relief right here in the end of the stretcher and then I put this in and then I got a bolt that kind of bolts this to the skin and then I went back and fastened I got a row of fasteners in between this and this kind of helps to stabilize this board here um, these are rated for 700 pounds each if I was carrying anything more heavy than this I'd probably put some backup structure here like a diagonal brace or something and then same thing right here I mean this is definitely gonna be the weak point not the bracket per se but just the attachment because you get this big moment and you're rationalizing it all into this joint right here so um, you're really relying on that it's a little bit I mean like I said all this stuff is kind of tied together here but uh, it's pretty good um, these brackets are really really stiff um, you got these holes here and what you're supposed to do is lay them on your truck drill a hole and then they have pins that drop into those holes and I guess what that does is it makes it so that the the ramp doesn't start wandering around on you like I said I use this in a way that is not consistent with what the manufacturer was recommending but I kind of know what I'm doing. It worked out really well. It's really, really stout. Um, like I said, we got the 800 pound thing in there and the ramp did not make any noise or seem like it was, um, seemed like it was um, having any trouble. So, like I said, these holes right here are piloted. They have like what appears to be a solid rivet that you're supposed to drop down the hole and it basically prevents this thing from floating that way now what I did like I said is um I've cut this into two parts and I clamped the middle two parts together uh, just to keep the um the two ramp halves like joined in the middle and uh, that welder that had it rolled right down the middle now these pads 
that are on this uh, these brackets here. These guys, they're really tacky and they do a good job. Like you don't feel like this thing is going to slip off at all. Um, so anyway, this is pretty much it. That's what I did. Um, yeah, we just uh, okay. So the way that I got this is kind of hillbilly, but the way that I got the uh, the welder out of the truck is I put I put some straps run from there to there and then I used to come along to basically let it down the ramp in a controlled manner um, it was pretty like I said it was pretty heavy and I did not want it rolling across my driveway or dumping over on its side um, the reason why I cut it in two is like I said so that these things are easy to handle. Um, I'm gonna stash it behind the shop. I'll probably be using it many, many more times to uh, load stuff in. Let's see, it just fits down on there. Everything feels pretty stable on it. It's stout as hell. So I didn't have any trouble, like I said. Um, let me go in and get the labeling for this this product because I want to basically um, recommend it. I think um, one of the things about the way that I installed this is I wound up with this proud edge here. Um, what I could have done is put a relief cut in this two by four here that's installed on this side, and then that way it would have basically indexed all this up. Um, I considered doing that. My concern was that I'd wind up with less material in that joint. Um, I feel like I could get a belt sander and true that up. And so I'm going to do that. Um, we did not have any problem getting the welder to go up and over that lip. So it's pretty heavy. So I think it's kind of a good um, last bump stop there to keep stuff from accidentally taking off down that ramp um i also put these sideboards on here they don't really do much but i'm thinking if you had like a dolly or something it would give you like a first indication that you're rolling off the end my guess is if you put any kind of side load because they're just installed with a deck screw that they'd wind up coming off but at least it'd give you a uh indicator of that you're in trouble before it happened Anyway, um, so this is the uh, this is the product right here. It's called Ramparts Ramp Tough Kit. Fits two by twelve boards. I got it at the Home Depot. One pair of ramp tops. Um, they could have all kinds of pictures of uh, lawnmowers and motorcycles and stuff going down these. 2x12 ramps. I don't know where they got this 2x12, but it didn't look like any 2x12 I've ever seen. Um, like I said, it's a good product. It feels really stout. I wouldn't be worried about the brackets necessarily. And this insulation method that they have shown here, I think it would be a little bit of opportunity for you to have some trouble getting your John Deere tractor up and down this thing. Um, that's one of the other things I plan on using this for. I have a John Deere 300 series uh, llama. And um, the store-bought ramps, usually they they terminate, they're like maybe 80 inches or some less. This is 96, so you got a lot lower or less of an angle. They do sell ramps that are like, that's long, but they're real expensive, especially for the aluminum one. They do make steel ones, but they're real, really, really heavy. And so, um, anyway, I feel like you could, with confidence, drive up in there with a, uh, with a, um, lawnmower, back it back down. You could actually, like, if I had to take my lawnmower somewhere, I could dump it up in there, put the ramps in next to it, ratchet everything down, go somewhere, and then get it back out on the other end, and, and do so in a fairly safe manner. And so, 
Yep, like I said, I think it's a nice little project. Turned out pretty good. I'm going to stash these behind my shop and keep them for the next job. Thanks, bye.